أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن ولا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, I genuinely hope you are all well and in the best of Iman I I'm super super happy to see actually that subhanallah the brothers and sisters have put together this amazing conference um, just to give you guys a bit of context, I didn't think we were initially planning, obviously, as as we have done for the last 57 years, to do a conference, um, obviously, in person. And we've done everything. Like, we planned, oh, we're going to do it in Birmingham, we're going to do this, this is going to be the topic, the team, and everything. And then Corona happened. And uh, I, to the point that we were kind of thinking, oh, we, I don't know, will we do conference anymore? And then, you know, really and truly, it comes down to the testimony of the brothers and sisters. They were pushing, you know, we should do a online virtual conference. And um, because of the brothers and sisters on the team and their zeal and their, and their, they convinced me, really and truly, they convinced me that actually doing a conference online is worthwhile and it's something that the community would benefit from, especially if Corona keeps us cooped up at home and keeps us separate from our families and so on and so forth. The need to have a revival of our Iman, have a revival of our commitment to Allah, to Islam, and to all of our general everyday obligations is something that is necessary. And, um, you know, I, I they convinced me, and I'm, I'm glad I listened to them. I'm glad I listened to them. I'm honest, one of the brothers and sisters, from the, reading just the comments you guys are leaving, the, the, the way you guys are interacting, the brothers and sisters were correct. Uh, the team behind this, I have to start off by actually praising them. <laughs> I can't do anything but praise uh, the conference team, uh, the brothers and sisters who have organized this, who put together all these speakers, put together the, the entire content the theme so on and so forth and actually the secondly to the our media and marketing team um, i don't know if you guys have been following the media and the marketing and the stuff that they put out to get this to the to the level it's at is you know it really comes down to them so honestly make dua for these guys um you know i i don't really do much i don't think i do. i'm an individual who does you know as much as he can or he should um, and these brothers and sisters really carry this organization forward. Every single one of them is a volunteer. Every single one of them gives up their own time and effort and alongside doing either full-time work or full-time studying. So, you know, I'm make dua for these guys. These guys are the bread and butter of this organization. And I ask Allah to actually give, grant them Jannah to Firdaus. Um, and if they beat me there, to ask Allah for me um, so that, inshallah, he allows me to join them too. Um, so... This short presentation is actually about these guys, uh, about the guys who bring this conference to you, about what they do um, um, and how they built process this organization, the Federation of Student Islamic Society. Many of you guys may or may not have heard about us. Many of you guys may interact with us in some way, shape or form. Um, and it's just a very, very short presentation, about five, 10 minutes tops. Um, just to give you guys an overview of the organization and how you guys can actually be part and parcel of this organization, actually what we're trying to do and where we're trying to go for the community. So the Federation of Student Islamic Societies is a very, very old organization. It's one of the oldest organizations in the UK. Uh, we are, oh, I always get this wrong. So we were first founded in 1963. Um, so that picture there shows our founding fathers. So these were initially international students. So students who'd come from abroad, like Malaysia, Pakistan, India, um, the, the Middle East and other places, they come to study in the UK and they came and they realized that there's a need for an institute, for an organization that represents the needs and interests of Muslim students. And back then, really, um, you know, the things that they were fighting for, like prayer rooms, halal food, um, so on and so forth. And they came together and there was only five ISOCs. You can't see it there, um, but there's, there, were, there were five ISOCs that um, were the starting sort of founding ISOCs. And they had a meeting in Birmingham University and in Birmingham University in 1963, Fosis was born. And since then it's grown to now encompass obviously 120 ISOCs uh, roughly every single year, which then goes on to represent obviously 120,000 Muslim students up and down the country. And you know we do all sorts of different services for them. We are their representative voice. We are their representative body. Uh, we do what we can to support the ISOC so that they can support Muslim students. You know, when new ISOC committees come through every single year, there is a need for them to have uh, training. There is a need for them to have resources. There is a need for them to have guidance. There is a need for them to have some form of leadership so that they know as an ISOC what they should be doing to help their student body. As an ISOC, they should to, to have that knowledge of where, what kind of things are beneficial and useful 
um, for the student body. That is the role that POSIS plays. If an ISOC ever has any issues um, due to, you know, political agendas and so on and so forth for ISOC to support them. So yeah, shout out to University of Birmingham, mashallah, tabarakallah. Funnily enough, actually, we were initially planning on doing this conference in Birmingham, so we were going, planning on going back home, but uh, obviously, uh, situation and circumstances dictated otherwise. Um, so that's just a little bit of historical context. Another uh, funny or interesting piece of information, uh, today is FOSIS's birthday. Uh, July 5th is the day we officially registered FOSIS as a, uh, a company. So FOSIS is a, is a not-profit company. Um, we're not a charity, so a lot of people think we're a charity. We don't get charity money. Uh, so we're, we're, we're not entitled to some of the benefits that charities have, but mm -hmm. yeah, it is our birthday today. Um, FOSIS's birthday today. so. Alhamdulillah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting day for us as well. So what is FOSIS? Um, give a very basic summary. FOSIS can be summarized through one surah of the Quran, okay? Um, and that's surah asr. It's a surah that most of us know um, and most of us should have memorized or have memorized or recited. And it's probably the go-to surah, surah asr, surah nas, and surah, kawthar, um, surah ikhlas and surah kawthar, let's be frank. When times are tough and uh, time is not a liberty, they're probably the surahs that we recite most often and most commonly in our prayers. Uh, so Surah Asr lays the foundation of falsus. And for falsus, really, our vision is this idea of where we want to take the community, where we want our community to go, where we want every Muslim student who eventually go on to become, you know, uh, professionals in the in the professional sphere, who then go on to become parents in the social sphere, who go on to become grandparents and so on and so forth, contributing to the community. What we want these students, while they're students, to learn and become is to recognize that there is a need for Muslim students. There is a need for them to be empowered through the Quran, fundamentally through the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu to take all the lessons that they learn from the Quran and the Sunnah and then to give that back to society, i.e. to be empowered through the words of Allah to enrich society. That is fundamentally what we want to do as sources. Now, that is the type of people we want to inculcate. That's the type of society we want to produce. That's the type of world we want you know, uh, to see. That's the type of world we want to see. That then translates into our mission that, you know, if that is the world we want to see, you know, how are we going to go about doing it? And for FOSIS, it really comes down to three areas of work. We work on development, developing Muslim students, developing our ISOPs. We work on this concept called faith-inspired activism, which I'll slowly, very briefly delve into. And we work on our advocacy work which then allows us to focus really on three big areas that we focus on ensuring that ISOCs and Muslim students, they're constantly be given, being given a comprehensive type of development and that we are supporting their continual maintenance and their continual growth to ensure that Muslim students have loads of opportunities to network with one another, to uh, meet one another, to have just different opportunities to different things. This conference is one such example. Um, you know, Corona couldn't keep us away from, you know, producing a conference where you brothers and sisters from the comfort of your homes and with your families can benefit um, and learn about Islam and so on and so forth. And, fun, you know, generally with conferences, because everyone comes from all over the country, 120 different ISOs, it's a chance for, you know, the talent and experience and the zeal and the energy and the creativity of the Muslim community to, to gel and synergize with one another. And, to, and the, the final point is for us to allow to advocate for these Muslim students to continue to be able to do so to advocate on their rights, to advocate on their behalf, so that no matter what happens, no matter what we see going on in the world, no matter how we feel the world may be viewing Muslims, that there is a body that stands for their rights. There's a body that stands to uphold justice for them. There is a body that stands to ensure that Muslim students continue to be fundamentally to stay Muslim. Um, so very, very quickly, some of the key headlines, I'm not gonna go through this in detail. When it comes to development work, our development work is basically to look towards helping ISOCs and Muslim students have the skills, knowledge and resources necessary and the experiences in order to do their jobs. Um, so, for example, uh, so how we choose to do that is um, through providing trainings, providing webinars, providing conferences, providing uh, in-person seminars, providing retreats, you know, we organize all of those things. If I had time to put up pictures, I'll spend ages just showing you guys pictures, but we do all of that. Um, you know, we do three-day retreats, we do weekend retreats. I uh, was actually sent on behalf of Falsus a few years ago to Turkey, where I was trained in uh, media and communications 
um, and sort of how to sort of deal with, if I ever had to go on mainstream media, other individuals within the organization have been on leadership courses, um, both in the UK and abroad. So all of this stuff is what we do to train up our Muslim students and our ISOCs to become the leaders of tomorrow. Now, alhamdulillah, I'm personally very, very honored to be um, telling you guys that, you know, this summer, inshallah, we will be launching this thing called Forces Academy, which is an attempt, you know, the first ever attempt to centralize this, a basic portal that the entire ISOC and Muslim student community can just go to one single place. And if they want to learn about, for example, leadership, they can access it. If they want to learn about the seal, they can access it. If they want to learn about how to give a khutbah, they can access it. If they want to learn how to give a halakha, they can access it. If they want to learn about courses on sabr and patience, they can access it. So all of these things, like even this conference is being recorded and what will happen is all the segments that the, the mashayikh and the workshop leads will be giving, they will be transformed into little booklets, little courses that we will upload onto Fosters Academy. And what Fosters Academy is, it's a way of using technology to drive growth in our community is something that people can use access via your phone so it'll be launched officially in september and you guys can all sign up really it's, although we're saying for muslim students in the ISO community it's, it's something that general public can sign up to and it's just in the comfort of your own home on your phone and your laptop you can have access to all these courses um, from a centralized point of view um, because it's hard once you're in an ISOC, if you're an ISOC leader, sometimes you're like on YouTube and exploring YouTube and you're on all these different courses. It's not easy. So what Pulses Academy is an attempt to find all the best material out there and to centralize it in one hub. And that is one thing we're trying to contribute to the community to ensure that this growth continues. Our second big thing is our political advocacy work. So I'm going to really go through this in, in summary, but I would argue we are the only, Mus only Muslim organization in the UK that focuses on political advocacy for Muslim students in particular. There's obviously other advocacy organizations, organizations in the country, MEND and CAGE are probably the big two. Um, but FOSIS is very, very specialist when it comes to Muslim students and its political work. And we really just focus on three things for our political work to protect the rights and interests of Muslim students, to preserve this idea of a Muslim identity, and to advocate for the inclusion of Muslim students into wider society as a whole. Um, and I've only given three examples of how we've done that. So we provide university support um, to, to, to ISOC. So one example, we have one ISOC here. It was a London ISOC that was banned, their prayer room was taken away, and then they got maligned in mainstream media, and the university refused to help them. So forces got involved, we campaigned on their behalf, and we supported them in getting the prayer room back. Um, another example, an ISOC in Ireland was uh, accused of having their, some of their students become um, become radicalized and they went off to Syria. Um, the Sunday Times wrote a piece about them. We then put pressure on them. We spoke to our solicitors and we added more pressure. We wrote a letter to them and eventually the paper had to take the, paper, uh, take the article down. And then we do all our, a lot of work on sort of countering extremism um, um, narratives around Muslims. You know, this idea that every Muslim student is a potential terrorist. Every Muslim student wants to go to university is going to get radicalized. You know, ISOCs are doing X, Y, and Z. All of those messages and narratives, we work very, very hard in trying to get rid of it via working through other institutes and organizations. And then our last, last part is basically what we call faith-inspired activism. And it's this idea from Surah Asr, this idea, Those who believe and do good, enjoin others to good and then remain steadfast. Um, that is fundamentally what our faith-inspired activism is. It's a concept that we're trying to reintroduce into the community this idea that any type of activism you do should come from a point of iman from, from a point of faith from a point of deep deep belief and conviction in islam that what we have is transformative for society it's good for society it's good for humanity and through our religion through what we believe we can bring good to society and good to humanity so we do all sorts of things one of our big projects is called believe and do good it's a it's a campaign where we usually run for one month but it will be transforming very soon where we encourage islamic societies and muslim students to get involved in social acts of good engaging with the community via you know homelessness projects or giving blood and so on and so forth we also have to mental health as a big thing that we do these are two posters one we did on a uh, on the topic of emotional intelligence and another one so sort of body image and self-esteem and there's so many other things that we do and I've only just given you guys a glimpse. I've only given you guys a glimpse of what Fosters does. We do so many other things, like this conference. We release statements on, you know, social issues. We had a lot of stuff recently come out on the concept of um, the Muslim community and how we can work on tackling racism and so on and so forth. So these are things that we're always sort of trying to be at the forefront of. And our impact can, you know, there's a few, but I've only picked three. I would say the biggest impact we work on through our development, advocacy and um, faith-inspired activism is that we produce the leadership of tomorrow. 
We work with ISOCs and many of our ISOC members, myself, I used to be an ISOC member, I used to be a head brother, and then I went on to join Polisys. My entire committee, vast majority of them were ISOC members. The vast majority, I'm sure Allah and Hussain will tell you they were ISOC members. Hussain was ISOC president. Um, and others, you know, they were, we were all ISOC members and now we continue to go, move forward and give back. Um, the second thing is just safeguarding the interests of Muslim students and Islam and that preventing, you know, um, our prayer rooms being take away, taken away or halal food not being available on campus. So other things that affect Islam and Muslim students, we work towards that. And then the third thing is just building a community. This conference is an attempt to build a wider community where Muslim students never have to feel alone, never have to feel as if, no, my ISOC is the only thing out there, but rather you are part of a wider ummah, you are part of a wider community, a community that has the same interests as you, has the same hopes and dreams and aspirations as you. And if we work together and we believe in working together, then we can bring about social change. So it's this idea that ISOC may act in its local you know, locality on its own campus, but together we can produce a global, national, international impact, inshallah. So that takes me to the last point, which is, alhamdulillah, rabbil alam. this is the first time ever we've managed to give and hold a conference free of charge, completely free of charge um, for all of our attendees. Um, but the work that we do and everything that I've kind of shown you guys is something that we require the community to support. We need our community, the Muslim community, to support our work. We need you guys to actually believe what we're trying to do and help us in it. You know, we're all volunteers, alhamdulillah, and I think we all love volunteering for this organization to serve this community, but mm -hmm. there is a need, and especially Corona has, has had a you know, devastating impact on the entire Muslim community. Um, and my message to you all would be, you know, if you, even if you put forces to the side, like put forces to the side, the Muslim, the Muslim community in the UK, we really need to look towards how we translate our giving in a way that produces about the greatest level of benefit for us whilst we also live in the UK. Alhamdulillah, I think we give great amounts of charity abroad, but we live here in the UK. We have our issues here in the UK and there are institutes and organisations that have been built looking at the problems that face us and sometimes we're not giving them the support that they need. I know many, many organizations that if they were to even be able to hire one member of staff, they would be able to deliver far greater benefits to the community than they currently do. But everyone's a volunteer. Everyone's kind of given up their spare time to do these things. And we as a community really need to start investing back in what we have here for the sake of our children and for their children, so on and so forth. But also for, the, for us right now as well. Um, the, these things require support. So this is me asking you guys, you know, a small donation and what we're asking for isn't a one-off donation. What I really want you guys to consider is this idea of regular giving, regular commitment, because that then allows for a much more sustainable way of for you guys to continue giving Sadaqah. So it's not just a one-off activity, but it's a deed that follows you through, um, but also a deed that then allows for the organization and the community to grow. Um, so what we are asking for is a one pound a week donation. So four pounds a month, just four pounds a month via regular giving, if you are able to, as the bare, bare minimum. My ideal, and I feel shy asking this, but I want to ask this, is that I wish I could ask you guys to just sacrifice one coffee a week. So about roughly a three pound coffee a week um, for Folsis. If you guys could do that as a regular donation, so three pounds a week, um, that would you know, make my day. <laughs> that would make my day. And I would feel as if alhamdulillah, we've, we've left something back. But if you guys can't, then, minimum 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 just one pound a week four pounds a month as a regular donation for forces for us that would then allow for us to continue doing the work that we do to be able to continue giving you the, these kind of conferences to be able to continue to do our political work and to defend the rights and interests of muslim students to continue to be able to provide the training the resources the conferences the retreats for the isocs and the muslim students and to continue to give all these other programs initiatives and events for muslim students so that's the link um it's a bitly link uh, forward slash forces give just two words very simple words um, and whatever you can donate even if you can't do a monthly donation there is a one-off option as well so if you guys can give a one-off option that's absolutely up to you and my statement to you guys would be don't let shaitan hold you back okay um, some of you guys will probably be like you know what? i actually believe in this this makes sense i'll, I'll commit to this and then what will happen is straight after this you're going to forget and you won't do it <laughs> so my advice to you all is now, whilst you're at least listening to me, get the link up on your phones, on your laptops. So then later on, when you open up the tab, or when you turn your phones again, that's the first thing that will greet you and you won't forget. So that is the link to donate. Um, please, please do donate. I think someone's also shared the link again on the, on the chat so you guys can open up, inshallah. I ask Allah to bless you all, accept all your efforts. 
um, keep us in your du'as, keep myself and the team in your du'as. It's a lot of work. It takes up a lot of our time, but we love it. We, we live for this. I would say the brothers and sisters in Falsus live for this. We live to see uh, this community grow, this community get stronger. And inshallah, we hope, we hope, we hope Allah accepts this from us too. And um, inshallah, just by giving, donating one pound, you can be part of this as well. But Allah, Allah is such a Lord, subhanAllah, that he's so merciful that he wouldn't deduct anything from our efforts um, while it's also giving you all the same level of reward. And sometimes that's the contribution. We don't need to give up our time. We don't need to give up our skills. We can just give a little bit of money and we still get the same rewards of all the efforts that other people are doing because fundamentally you're empowering that change to happen. So I ask Allah Jalla to accept you all. Um, I know uh, Sheikh Yahya made a dua uh, about meeting each other and giving guys food. So I'm going to try and one up him. Uh, I ask Allah Jalla to allow us all into Jannah for those to have a station underneath the throne of Allah Jalla wa'ala such that if we were to look up, we would be able to look at the throne of Allah Jalla wa'ala and that we are amongst those who Allah blesses and allows to see his face every single day, twice in the morning and the evening. And finally, 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 if I get to Jannat Firdaus, you are all invited to come to my palace, to spend time in my palace and to drink tea, honey and everything else that has been made halal for us together inshallah as a community of believers in paradise zakumullah khairan subhanakum bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik may allah bless you all assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah